Let's look briefly at connection strings. I'm kind of tired of this connection string being so horizontal and taking up so much. And it just doesn't feel right to hard code a connection string in my code. And hopefully you don't hard code your connection strings in your code. We like to centralize connection strings into a configuration file for a couple reasons. One, it's easy to find, easy to change, easy for administrators to get to. And two, we do not have to recompile our code if we wish to change our connection string. Connection strings simply state which database we want to connect to and how. In this case, the data source is the database sitting on my computer. I want to talk to my instance of SQL that is sitting on my computer. You can install several instances of SQL Server on one box. You don't have to have just one. So look at my computer. On there you will find my instance. And I want to use the MyTestDB in that instance, that's the database I want to talk to. That's what initial catalog means. Let me talk to my test DB. That's my database right here on my box in my instance. Integrated security equals true means use my user account. I am logged in to Windows right now with my administrator account. And so when we connect to SQL Server, we can also connect to SQL Server using our Windows account. I've set up this instance of SQL Server to respect my Windows account as an administrator account. You can also have other accounts. And then in here, you would say username equals whatever your username is, password equals yada yada yada. Generally, you don't want to put your password in a configuration file, though. You can also encrypt those. There's ways to do that. I'll leave that to you to Google. I deleted too much here, didn't I? Control Z, integrated security equals true. And I think we're good to go. Let's put this connection string in a configuration file. If you don't know what a configuration file is, with executables, they're app config files that get renamed to the name of the executable dot config at the end. With Visual Studio, we have this app config. When I hit Control Shift B and build my project, let's show all files and look at the bin directory inside of debug. You'll see that there's a file here called entity framework scratchpad.exe.config. Oh, go look. It has the exa exact same contents as the app config file does because Visual Studio simply took our app config file and copied it out to the output directory and slapped a dot config on the end of it and renamed it to the name of our executable. That's Visual Studio being nice. .NET, when you actually run your executable, it looks for .exe.config. .NET has no idea that Visual Studio had this app config. All .NET knows about when we run our executable is if there's a configuration file, it will be the same name as the executable with a .config at the end of it. Anyway, I want to go back to our app config version and put our connection string there so it's centralized. There's a lot of configuration info in here. You can go look up the schema for .NET configuration files. There's so many configuration options you can have here. Let's add our connection string. Here's the connection string section. Add connection string. This is where the actual connection string will go. Let's go to our program here and I'm actually going to highlight all of this. Control X, Control Shift L to delete the constructor. Go back over here and paste the connection string right there. And then connection strings are looked up by their name. It's kind of like a dictionary. We give a name to our connection string and then the value is the actual connection string. The name here indicates the key that we will look up this connection string with. And the entity framework follows this really cool thing called convention over configuration. If you've done any programming for a long time, configuring things is a pain in the neck and it's just plumbing and it's no fun. And so the more we can eliminate the configuring things the better and so the entity framework follows a lot of conventions instead if we follow the entity framework conventions then we don't have to do a lot of configuration however if we want to take the configuration approach we can one of the conventions that the entity framework follows is it will look up the connection string of the name that matches the name of your context Okay, as long as this connection string name has the same name as my context, then the entity framework will look it up by the name of the context and, and be happy. Otherwise, I have to do some stuff in here to say, hey, go find a connection string by a different name. Let's use that convention over configuration. I'm going to copy the name of my context. I will name the name of my connection string the exact same thing. I'll save this. Go back to my CS file. Control-Shift-S, F10. 
And actually, you know what? We put this video in the database. Let's actually pull it out and see if that works. So I think we're done with this part here, done with that. I just want to say video, me video gets me context. Out of the videos, give me the first video. First is an extension method in system.link using system link control minus to get the cursor back to where I was at. Now I have a dot first paren paren and what dot first does is it will go to the videos and give me just the first one in that list. I know there's only one. In fact since I know there's only one I could say single but whatever. Uh, and then let's write out the properties of me video. Console write line me video dot ID control L control V V V we have a title and we have a description. You saw in previous videos how I sent this data down to the database. Let me prove that we can actually pull this data back out. I'm going to hit F10, 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 F10. We get an error because in the connection string, we have to provide the provider name, which is a deep, dark thing. I don't, well, it's not dark, but it's deep, and I don't want to get into it right now. We essentially have to state in our connection string what kind of database we're talking to. Generally, SQL Server, but you can connect to other databases if you want to. Thus, you'll have a different provider. Our provider is system.data.sqlclient. So here in the connection string, I'll say provider name is system data.sql client. If you do a lot of SQL Server interfacing, just memorize this. I'm going to save. Let's go back and see if we can pull that video out. F10, 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 F10. That pause there was the entity framework talking to our database. There is overhead to connecting with the database. We saw some of that overhead when we created the database in the last video. Using the profiler, we watched that. Let me bring this onto the window and just right line these three values, you can see the ID is one because this is the first video added to my database. Hello World Entity Framework. That's the exact same title we had before, and here's the exact same description. Now, one last thing about these connection strings. Hopefully, that's pretty straightforward how they work. We have a data source, initial catalog, and then your credentials. There's a lot, a lot of other options you can add in here, but generally, it's just these basic things. If you don't want to memorize that, there's actually an easy way to grab it. I'm going to hit Control-Alt-S, which pulls up the Server Explorer in Visual Studio and allows us to connect to databases and use those databases, look at those databases, modify them, much like SQL Server does. However, SQL Server is just a little bit better, more powerful. If you use this tool a lot, you'll find yourself going back to SQL Server because this tool is not as epic as a lot of people think. Server name. It is my computer, and I know my instance is hanging out there. Use my Windows credentials. We already talked about that. I'm going to hit the down arrow here. What happens is this little tool will connect to my box, my instance, using my Windows account, and figure out what databases are out there and populate this dropdown for us. So hit the down arrow, and there you go. There's my test DB. Click my test DB. I can click test connection just to make sure everything's cool, but I know everything's cool, otherwise it wouldn't be able to look at my databases. But whatever, I'll click this button just for tickles. Click OK. Here's the connection to my database. I can right click on it and say properties, or I can hit F4, and here's the connection string. I can highlight all this, copy it, open notepad, and paste it right there. That's generally how I'll figure out my connection string without having to memorize it. I used to have this stuff memorized and realized it was kind of useless. Bytes in my brain being taken up, so I just use that trick to always derive my connection string. I think I'll actually show you. Let's, let's just poke around in here a little bit. Plus sign, tables. There's my videos again. I can right click. I can say show table data. I can add data in here if I want to that sort of thing. Go ahead and use this all you want to, but generally you'll find yourself going back to SQL Server because SQL Server is much more powerful.